Hi, so in this video I want to talk about merging dictionaries. So sometimes we need to merge various dictionaries together. And a typical example of this might be for app configurations. We may have three sets of settings and how they serialize, where they come from, doesn't really matter. But let's just say that you end up with three dictionaries in your app and these contain settings and some need to override the others. For example, you could have default configurations, user-specific overrides, environmental variable-based overrides, command line overrides, and so on. So let's take an example. Let's say that we have these three dictionaries over here, like so. So you can see that my default settings have some values for the host, the port. There's nothing defined for the username and password. They're none. They could maybe not even be present in the default settings. I've got a default connection timeout, a query timeout. Then I have user settings where the user says, well, I don't want to connect to port 3306. I'm running, you know, my database server, let's say in a Docker container and it's being exposed on port 9906. I want to be able to, as a user, specify which port I want. And maybe I want to change the connection timeout. On the other hand, we may also have environment variables. Typically, when you have secrets, you're going to be using environment variables or some other form of picking up those secrets. You're not going to put them directly into your config files that are, you know, in your Git repo. So what we want is we want to combine those three things in such a way that environment variables is going to override user settings and user settings is going to override default settings. So in this case, I'm going to want my password to be some secret. I'm going to want my connection timeout to be 20 and my port to be 9906. My username will be test. And then the remaining settings, like for example, the query timeout, should come from the default settings and whatever else. So there's this kind of hierarchy. So what we want is a single dictionary. And there's various approaches from least desirable to most Pythonic. So let's go ahead and try that. And this is the way that you probably shouldn't do it. So we're going to start by making a copy of default settings. So we're going to make, and we won't make a deep copy in this case, I don't need it, so I'm just going to make a shallow copy. And then I'm going to update my settings. I'm going to update it with the user settings. So if I've got keys in user settings that are common with the keys in the default settings, it will override those values. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and update once more, but now with my environment variables, like so. So if we now look at our resulting dictionary, we have the desired result, right? The username and password came from the environment variables. Our, our default, our user settings overwrote the port and the, I think it was the connection timeout, right? And then the rest came from the defaults. So that works, but that code can really be improved by being more Pythonic. The most Pythonic way of doing you know, kind of exactly the same thing, creating a new dictionary and then updating those dictionaries is to use dictionary unpacking. So we're going to use a dictionary. We're going to unpack default settings first. Then we're going to unpack the user settings. And then we're going to unpack the environment variables. And this will have the same effect. It's going to start the dictionary by, you know, taking the keys and values from here then it's going to basically merge that into this one. Any new keys will get added. Any existing keys will basically override the value from default settings and so on. And so we end up with the same thing. So this is the more Pythonic way of merging dictionaries. Just use dictionary unpacking. Now, one thing though, is that we ended up creating a totally new dictionary, which might be fine, but do we really need a new dictionary in this particular case? No, we just need to be able to look up the values, but in such a way that environment variables overrides user settings and that in turn overrides default settings. So that's really what we want. We don't need to create a new dictionary. We can save that space. And to do that, we can use the chain map class, which is in the collections module. So from collections. I'm going to import chain map. The way chain map works is that we give it a variable number of dictionaries or maps as arguments. It takes a variable number of arguments. When we look up a key, it's going to look up the key in the first map. Let's actually just create it and let's see. So let's do a chain map and 
this is the thing. The way the chain map works is we pass it various dictionaries, right? D1, D2, D3, for example. Now we can look up a key in this chain map. And the way it works is that it will look for the key in D1 first. If it doesn't find it, it then moves on to D2. If it finds it there, it returns that value. If it doesn't find it, it moves on to D3, looks for it, returns it if it's there, and then you'll get a key error, of course, if it doesn't exist in D3 either. So chain map doesn't actually create a new dictionary, but when you request a key, it just looks for it in D1, then in D2, then in D3, and then returns the first occurrence of it. Which means that in order for the environment variables to override, let's say, the user settings, then we need to provide our environment variables first, then our user settings, and then our default settings. So now when we look up a key in chain map, it's going to look in the environment variables first. If it finds it, like for example the password, it will just return it. If it doesn't find it, maybe it's looking for the query timeout, then it's going to go on to user settings. Now user settings does not have a query timeout, default does, so it looks in user settings, doesn't find it, goes to default settings and finds it. So this is how we create our chain map. Now chain maps are typically used for reading data, but you can also modify them. I'll show you that in a sec, but that's not the typical use case. So we can look up things just using regular key lookup, just like with a regular dictionary, except we don't have a new dictionary now, right? So we've got the settings, we can find that. We can find settings for, let's say, query timeout, which we know is only present in the default settings, and there we have it. Now, if we wanted to, you could convert the settings, because if you look at settings, right, it's just a chain map, and it tells you which, diction dic sorry, which dictionaries have been chained. You can also get the maps this way. If you want to get the individual maps that are in your chain map, you can list them out this way. You can also just convert it, if you want to, to a regular dictionary. So if you really wanted to, you could do that, and then you'll get a regular dictionary with the proper overrides in the same way that we had with doing the unpacking. So that's probably going to be the most Pythonic way for most use cases, is to use the chain map, because you get exactly what you need in terms of one dictionary overriding the other, and you're not creating a new dictionary. Now remember that I said that chain maps are actually mutable. So if we look at what the chain map contains, it contains these three dictionaries, right, in that specific order. This is a list, it contains them in a specific order. When we do, let's say, an insert or an update, it will only look at the first dictionary. It completely ignores all the other ones. So if we were to update username, let's say, it would update this username here. If we were to update, let's say, the query timeout, which is down here, it's not gonna update query timeout in here. What it's gonna do, it's gonna create a new key in the first dictionary called query timeout and set it to whatever the timeout is. And this basically now overrides it, right, in the chain. And same thing if we delete. If we try and delete something, it will try and delete it from this first dictionary only. It does not look at anything else. So let's take a look at that. And let's go ahead and let's do settings, new key, and let's make that equal to, let's say, test. And then I'm also going to update an existing key in the chain but remember that the query timeout, as we saw, is in the last dictionary, right? Query timeout is only in the last dictionary. So if we do this, now if I read my settings back, let's say new key, that works just fine. And then I can also read my settings back for my query timeout, and that's going to work just fine. I get test and 100. If I look at the maps themselves in the settings, you can see what happened. Right? This query timeout that was in the last dictionary of the map is untouched, but the query timeout now has been inserted in the first dictionary, and new key has been inserted in the first dictionary too. Now, what about deleting an entry? Well, we can certainly do that. Let's go ahead and try to delete the password, for example. Password is in, these, in this first dictionary over here. So that's going to work just fine. If we look at settings maps again, 
you can see that password now is gone from that first dictionary. But what about removing an entry that's not in this root map, right? In this first map. Let's say we want to remove um, port, right? Because we've got port in here. We've got port in here. And I want to remove port. It's not in the first map. So you could try doing delete settings and then just specify port like so. But we get a key error, right? And if we look at the exact uh, error message, it says the key is not found in the first mapping. And this is because, as I told you, the chain map will only mutate the first root map in the chain, nothing else. So if you really wanted to modify this and actually remove port from the dictionaries in the chain, you would have to actually remove it from the dictionaries in the chain one by one. So you could try something like this. You could say for map in, and I'm using underscore because of course map is a built-in keyword. So uh, for map in settings.maps, and I'm going to use the map underscore dot pop method. So I'm going to pop. I don't actually care about the return value, but I don't want to put an if statement to check if the key is in there or not, and then if it is, delete it. So I use the pop, which will do that whether the key exists or not, as long as I provide a default. So if I do this, and now if I look at my, let's say I convert uh, settings to a dictionary, you'll see that port is totally gone. In fact, if we look at now the maps in the settings, you can see that port is gone from this one over here and port is gone from this one over here. So it basically, we had to go in and, you know, modify those things ourselves. But mutating the, a dictionary is not really the main primary goal of a chain map. It really is about, you know, chaining these dictionaries together without having to produce a new one. And of course, it does not create a new dictionary. So where is this data actually being stored? If we're not creating a new dictionary, where is it being stored? In the original dictionaries. So when we deleted, for example, and inserted and updated values, if we take a look at our uh, environment variables dictionary, this is what it looks like now. You can see it has the new key of test. It has a query time out of 100. So mutating the chain map mutated the underlying dictionary and in particular the root dictionary. Now we went one step further and actually went through all the different maps in the chain map and deleted port. So if we look at the other ones like user settings, that doesn't have port and default settings doesn't have port either. We did mutate those underlying dictionaries. Okay, so bottom line, we have two ways of merging dictionaries in a Pythonic way. One way involves making a copy of all the data, right? That's using the unpacking. So we saw that it was with doing, let's say, default settings, and then the star star user settings, and then the star star and vowels. And, you know, we defined it in this way because the way that this dictionary is built, it first unpacks default, then it unpacks user settings, overriding default settings if applicable, then it unpacks and vowels and overrides anything before it if applicable. On, with the chain map, since the lookup order is kind of reversed for the chain map, which is the other method we looked at, and we have to specify it in reverse order since we want nvars to take precedence over user settings, to take precedence over default settings. And so those are two Pythonic ways of merging dictionaries. One will create a copy, which maybe is something that you need and want if you're manipulating that dictionary all the time then maybe it makes more sense to create a new dictionary rather than trying to work with a chain map. But if you're just reading things from it or you just have a few you know, settings that you're changing here and there, then a chain map makes a lot of sense and it doesn't take up extra memory. All right, thanks for watching.